Hi, welcome to <clears throat> my channel, Takayaki Tarot. Today is April 10th, 2024. April 10th, Wednesday, 2024. My last video was yesterday. So... Before we get started, I want to remind anyone that's watching that these messages are not going to resonate with everyone, and that's okay. If they resonate with you, these are clearly great. If it is not, then don't force it to be your story. <sighs> okay, um... So I had many dreams last night. Um, okay, so I'm just going to start pulling cards. Okay, so I'm going to start off with Rumi Jewels of Wisdom. I barely got to shuffle, but okay. Wow, that's really nice. The moon and the stars are revolving around about your radiance. Oh, that's so sweet. The moon and the stars are revolving about your radiance. The sun and the wheel of heaven coil in the loveliness of your labyrinth. <laughs> so there's also something about the universe reminding you how special and how unique you are. Like the moon, the universe, the stars, they all know that you're special, right? They all know that. But I feel like this is just a little reminder, like, don't forget, you know, you're this. You know, you're, you're, you're that. There's nothing like a little reminder from the cosmos, you know? The sun and the wheel of heaven coil and the loveliness of your labyrinth yeah i feel like so they're reminding you not only how special and unique you are but how loved you are like they love you the sun and the wheel of heaven coil and the loveliness of your labyrinth your labyrinth so there's people could see you as like a maze or very confusing or complicated or they cannot figure you out but to the cosmos the universe there's beauty in that and it's supposed to be like that so like the people who are not supposed to figure you out they cannot figure you out they're not supposed to figure you out you're not supposed to be easy to read because they're not meant to read you you know like have you ever read you know how there's like those those books that some people just don't understand and no matter how many times or ways you try to explain the context of the book or the paragraph or whatever it is they, it's, they're, it's just not clicking for them. Like, they're just not understanding it. Most likely because the material is not for them. Just like how if you're trying to, like, explain to people how you are or if you're, like, or if you feel like you want to or you feel like you should, you don't have to because those people are not meant to understand you. It's kind of reminding me of, like, the ritual of the, of the learning of the rights in this deck. So, like, if you feel some type of way around a certain group of people, those are not your people. You're not supposed to explain yourself to certain people. You're not supposed to, like, you're like a whole labyrinth. They're, they're never going to understand you. They're never going to take the time to go deep within or, like, see you for who you are. Because, you know, like, with the labyrinth, you have to, like, there's a start point. You have to go. And usually the it's the center of the labyrinth. That's where the goal is. These people are, there's people, I feel like you're being reminded that, like, 
there's a, a group of people or a person around you that you're, you're not like if they're not going to go deep within themselves and then like see you for who you are, the center of who you are, you don't just because they don't doesn't mean like you have to forget that or like just because they don't, it's like it's okay. They're not supposed to because you are not for them. So I hope that makes sense. The sun and the wheel and the sun and the wheel of heaven coil in the loveliness of your labyrinth. There's something very special and unique about the center of who you are. And some people are just not going to see that because they're not meant to see that because you are not for them and they are not for you. But I feel like the universe, what the universe is doing, they're reminding you, yes, you are unique, lovely, amazing, blah, 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 all that good stuff, right? We're reminding you that you are all of this. You know, because, like, there's going to be times and people, places where they're not going to see that. But it's okay as long as you see that because we see that. So we need you to see that as well. So I feel like this is just a reminder um, like, yeah, the universe is like, yeah, we know how special you are, but don't forget that about yourself either. But there's also something about a depth within you, collective, like, with the whole labyrinth thing. Labyrinths, like, if you know anything about Greek mythology, labyrinths tend to have, like, traps and, um, hidden treasures and, you know, Sometimes certain things are, labyrinths are so complicated, man. Like there are some spots in labyrinths, depending on the labyrinth that you're in, like if you are not careful, you can fall into a trap or fall into an illusion. Okay. There's something about that here. Someone could have falling into, falling under an illusion of what they thought you were. But it's like the reality is like they never really got the time or they never really like seen you. Or they never really wanted to go through to the heart of the maze or the labyrinth. Yeah, I feel like there's something about that. And usually um, the, the traps are in the outskirts. Well, how do I say that? Um, like on the outer layers, not outside the labyrinth. But, like, as you're going towards the middle or, like, before you even get to, like, the middle, there's all these traps, like. So, all right, put it like this. So, here's, here's, this is a whole labyrinth, right? So, out here would be, like, a bunch of traps and stuff like that to prevent you from even getting close to the, to the middle. I feel like somebody fell into some sort of illusion of who you are or some trap before they even got a chance to get to the middle. But I feel like you're you're being reminded, like, it's okay, you know, if they're going to fall into traps, then, you know, it, it's just... Because one thing about labyrinths, labyrinths are all about tests. Labyrinths, they they test you, you know, like your, your strength, your wisdom, your courage, what's truly in your heart. That's really what labyrinths are about. They're like a test of uh, courage and faith and things like that, right? So... Whoever these people are, whoever this person is that got trapped in these illusions, like before even getting to like the real center of who you are, it's like it's because it their heart wasn't in the right places when it came to you. Okay, so now I'm getting like the never ending story. Um I think it's the first never ending story movie. So there was like this part where um the boy not the boy who's reading the book. Um, the the boy who's like the the warrior, the hero, right? Mm -hmm. That has to like save the princess from like the darkness or the nothingness. I think it was. But um, anyway, so he had to go to like this desert or whatever, and he had to like pass these two sphinx. 
right? Um, but, like, he was being, like, mentored and monitored by, like, these little old couple or whatever, and they were telling him, like, he has to pass three tests. And the first test was, like, the Sphinx, and, like, the second test was, like, I think the fog, which, like, would show the desire or whatever. Ah! Hold on. Oh, my God. My daughter, she just, like, scared me. I had, I did not even hear her wake up. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> hi, baby girl. Hi. Oh, I love you too. Hi, my sweetie pie. Good morning. <laughs> I, I didn't hear you wake up. It's so early for you to be up. Oh, my goodness. All, all I felt was like her little like um she was just trying to climb on me and I'm like what? <laughs> oh my baby. But um she's like hugging me right now. That's so cute. So yeah, the two Sphinx, right? Um so like bunch of like it talked about like how like warriors and people would try to like get past the Sphinx, but like the Sphinx that's another thing, too. Sphinxes are usually around in labyrinths. There's usually, like, creatures and monsters in labyrinths as well. All right? So you could have, like, a whole team within you or around you making sure that people are, uh, like, if you're not going to pass a test and you can't get nearby collective, you can't see what's, you know, inside of them. You can't be with them or whatever the case it is, right? So, <clears throat> and the one part that I was talking about with the two, hold on, my love. The one part that I was talking about with the Sphinx, um, I, there was like a knight, and this was before the hero boy was going to go towards the Sphinx. In the movie, definitely watch The Never Ending Story if you haven't, or yeah, read the book. Um, so they're two, the knight, he went towards the two Sphinx, and they opened their eyes, and immediately they knew that he wasn't going to pass the test, and like they kind of like smoked him, and he just like burned up. Um, but the boy, he did pass it, or the test. I think he did. Anyways, so that's basically what's going on. What I'm talking about with the whole labyrinth thing is that, you know, these people are falling into traps and illusions about you because it's not where their heart resides. Like, their heart is not in the right place when it comes to you. So, yeah, just because there, there's people around you that are not passing the test that's required for them to be with you, around you, um, in any kind of way, you shouldn't feel bad. That doesn't make you any less special. If anything, that just makes you more special. And you need to be reminded because there's obviously something great and amazing and miraculous about you that it's just not for everyone to experience. All right? Okay, my love. <laughs> Hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. All righty. Gonna easier to like shuffle these cards. The constellations of isolation, number thirty-five in the reverse. So there's either a person or a group of people that they cannot not like they cannot be by themselves they don't like being away from you the constellations of isolation they're not seeing the beauty of isolation 
the power of isolation. They don't, I don't know, for some reason, it's like being alone doesn't sit right with them. It's it's really because there's like no peace within them. The constellations, I'm going to read this card because I haven't gotten this card out. Um, <clears throat> the constellations of isolation. Also, whoever this person is or these people, they feel like something is not enough. Not enough, not enough. The constellations of isolation. There's something very depressive and gloomy about this person or people. They're also like stumped, like they just don't know what to do. But this is also a group of people or a person that like, let's say there's a bunch of traps that are around you, collective. Like let's say, all right, put it like this. Let's say you are a smack dab in the middle of a labyrinth, right? And in order for these people to get close to you, they have to get through all of these traps and tests and things like that, right? That are hidden around the labyrinth. You would be like the prize in the middle of the labyrinth, right? Hypothetically speaking, in this metaphor. Someone got hit with the trap and now they're stumped. They don't know what to do. And now they're trying to like, I don't know, try to figure out how to get past this obstacle, this test, this sphinx. Because like I said, like sphinxes are usually all up in labyrinths. And they're usually, what sphinxes do in labyrinths is actually, um, I don't know, I think clever and neat. Um, so, hypothetically speaking, if this person ran into a sphinx in your labyrinth, there's like, sphinxes are really good with riddles, all right? And the answer is usually never what you think it is. So this person is trying to figure out an answer to something. Let's say they ran into a sphinx and the sphinx told them a riddle and the riddle had to do with you or how to get past or how to get to you or you know, something about you, whatever it is, this person is stumped. And it's like, they have to kind of just like, they can't ask for help. They have to figure this out on their own, but they're stumped. They cannot. Also, this person is sitting on a stump. You see that? A tree stump? And you see how there's like a bird? All right, let me read the card. Number 35, the Constellations of Isolation. Constellation of isolation. Hold on. Okay. So yeah, the constellations of isolation. The constellations of isolation. Seclusion can feed the spirit, and with that nourishment comes a rebirth. So many people and beings take themselves away from society and people, from the chatter and the gatherings and the beautiful noise that is our collective. The sense of being separate for a time is nothing to fear. For you are separate, you are unique, you are experiencing the multiplicity through the oneness of your being. Being alone can heal us and bring us back from the dark place that is loneliness. A state we can experience even when amongst others. The comforting, healing qualities of solitude are yours, and these arrive spontaneously, unscheduled, without artifice. Your spirit desires you to breathe the light right through your entire being until you shine with the radiance that is your soul. Um, that's wonderful. I feel like you've gone through this collective. For some of you, you could be going through this, like the isolation program, period whatever which however you want to call it what was it what did i just read what was it i just saw it i just saw it i just saw it okay yeah so who i feel it could be one person but it could be a group of people On a, you know what, too? This could also be, like, a mass, like, a, a large group of people that are just, like, they just don't know. 
You know, on a grander scale, this could be a group of people that just don't know how to find themselves and get to the heart of who they are. And it's like every time they meet an obstacle within them, like a trauma or a habit or whatever, it's like, oh no, what do I do now? There's an obstacle in front of me. I, I don't know the answer to this riddle. I'm just going to sit here and wallow in my lonely, loneliness and sadness and boo-hoo-hoo, right? And it's just like, this is, you guys have to figure it out. Like, put some pep in your step and, you know. But on a more secluded, more, you know, smaller scale, this is just like one person around you or like a couple of people around you. And it's like an obstacle, they were faced with an obstacle or they're faced with an obstacle and now they just like don't know how to like get past it. And it's like they're wallowing because it's like you are at the center of the labyrinth. Okay, another example. Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. If anybody read the book or saw the movie, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And the labyrinth. By the way, um, Hagrid was like growing the la um, the maze throughout the entire book. It was actually pretty funny, like how Harry and his friends kept like running into the maze. And like every time they ran into the maze, like it was like higher and higher because it was just growing. But anyways, let me move past that. So in... Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. The third task was they had to get to the cup. Um, it, that was in the center of the maze. But they were also warned that it, it, within the maze, there are illusions and tricks and things are not what they seem to be within the maze. So you have to have your wits about you, you have to have your faith about you, and you have to have your courage within you. A lot of the people did not make it out in the maze. A lot of them got bewitched from whatever was in the maze. This doesn't talk about it in the movie, but in the book, Harry actually ran into a sphinx and he had to answer some riddles. All right? And then he was able to move past. They cut a lot. They cut out a lot from what happened in the maze in the book. They didn't really show it in the movie, but um but um, my point is is that the the cup was in the middle of the maze. Actually, the cup ended up being a port key. You know, which, but that was like a whole thing with Voldemort. Like that was like a, that wasn't really part of the, the, um, the game. No persons at the age of 17 shall be put in the room to the Goblet of Fire. Anyways, the books are way better, but um, the movies are visually appealing. Um, so yeah, I feel like there's something, I don't know, I feel like these people are, like if they don't have the faith and the courage and the wisdom and the strength to get past their own obstacles, you cannot blame them for not getting past the obstacles that are around you you being the prize it's i feel like that's why that reminder is so heavy it's like just because they can't do it doesn't make you any less unique special um radiant lovely right it's just unfortunately for them they're just not up for the task you know and that's okay it's just they're not it's just not for them you're not you're not for them you're not the prize for them. They're not the prize for you. Okay? I feel like that's a big reminder. I also feel like, so you being in the center of the maze, you can get a little lonely and, right? But I feel like that's for your own good, for your benefit. It's because, like I said, it's like you're too unique and you're too special and you're too magnificent and radiant. It's like you're not meant for the world. You're not meant for everybody. And everybody's not meant to be around you. 
but the right people, right, with the learning of the rights, the right people will find their way, will make it through the maze and, you know, get to you. Blessed be lonesome traveler. You are a wise one setting out now on the pilgrimage of the soul traveling alone for a time. And when you come back to yourself, to those you love, and to those who love you, you will be transformed in enriching ways that create beauty and magic wherever you go, even amidst the greatest challenges. Go with grace and be well. That was a message from, I guess, the creator of this book. It says, Blessed be Lucy Cavendish. <sighs> so, yeah. I don't know. I feel like you guys um, are just reminded to not be discouraged. It's kind of like another one by Sida. And another one gone. And another one gone. Another one by Sida. It's like, wow, this per another person never made it past this obstacle. Or another person got stopped in the tracks. Or another person fell for an illusion. Or another person. So it might be a little discouraging to you. But it's just because of how magnificent and amazing and precious you are to the universe. The universe needs to make sure that whoever wins you, in a sense, I know you're not an object, but this is like the best way I can put it. The universe needs to make sure that whoever gets to be with you, it's like they have earned it. They, they did the work, they fought the battles, they slayed the demons, they answered the riddles, they dealt with the loneliness. You're just so perfect and pure to the universe. You're like their precious baby project that you need to be put here because it's like not everyone, and I also feel like not everyone is can even, not everyone is even capable of understanding the depths of you or like um, understanding like your value. So that's why all of these traps and illusions and obstacles are around you everywhere because it's like not, it's like getting a hold of like pure magic in a sense, right? It's kind of like with great power comes great responsibility. So whoever is going to be your person, whoever is going to be your community, your soul tribe, like, they too need to be worthy, special. Romance, fifth house, romance, play, creativity, affairs of the heart, being yourself and enjoying it, self-expression. So that's what you're doing right now. You could be in this energy right now. So you may not even be noticing that people are trying to like, um, we have the letter D, complete somebody's first, last, middle, initial name of a word or a place. Uh, I just heard don't. Don't. I'm going to get back to that. Don't do it. Somebody could be telling another person, don't do it. Don't go towards the collective. Don't do it. Don't go towards the collective. And now this person or these people, so if it's one person, somebody told this person or somebody is telling this person not to go towards you. So either that person is stumped, trying to figure out why they shouldn't, or the person that's saying that is like trying to figure out how to convince whoever's trying to go towards you not to go towards you. I feel like it's both. But I feel like... So here's the thing too, when you are in the middle of a labyrinth in the maze, you're not really paying attention to, you, you can't, you can't see what's going on because the hedges are massive. They're like tall, 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 tall. So whatever's going on outside uh, the area that you are in, you can't see it. So whatever is going on around you, you can't see it. So I feel like that's why you're in this fifth house energy. You're just like, Focus on your creativity, whatever makes you happy, being yourself, um, playing, enjoying life. That's your energy right now. So you don't exactly... 
oh my god there's something about just a ball like you're just pure magic but i feel like you're in this energy right now you're kind of just like focused you're not even focused you're just like doing your own thing you know how like when a child is in their own world and they're just like playing with their toys or watching their show or like coloring they're just not really paying attention to what's going on around them right that's your energy right now that's you so you don't notice the people that are falling into traps and illusions and tricks and failing the riddles and things like that. You're not noticing that. And I feel like that's okay. You don't have to notice that. Just keep focusing on this energy that you're in. I feel like the universe is like, just focus on us. Just, just, just focus on yourself. Focus on your connection with God. Just keep enjoying life just just focus on that right so if you have may have felt discouraged the universe is like no 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 you're you're good you're good oh what is that zero 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 completion the end of the matter cycle close was that even okay so back to this somebody whoever is saying don't do it don't do it saying to another person that's trying to figure out a way to get closer to you. Um, if that person was being prevented from getting close to you or these people were being prevented from getting close to you, they're not being prevented anymore. Now it's just up to them. They themselves. No, there's no longer outside influences. There's no longer things like that it's like it's up to them whether or not they want to like i don't know continue this journey continue this battle like answer the riddles fight the demons slay the monsters like it's up to them now so they can't say or this person can't say oh it was so and so it was so and so or you know they told me they told me no now whoever these persons are these persons i just say it like that because it's you know make it just shortens it whoever these persons are it is entirely up to them now. So that could be another reason why they're trying to figure out how to like isolate themselves from another person or another group of people. The end of the matter is I can close. Um, also, whoever this persons are, this people, persons, they can't scapegoat. Like, they can't use the excuse of, like, oh, it was so-and-so, or it was these people. That's, they can't do that anymore. So it's it's now they have to make this decision. They have to put in the effort and the work. They can't, it's kind of like they can't let someone else take the reins for them. You know how you see it all the time where in order to, avoid making a decision you just like put your hands in the life of someone else like you see it in tv and movies all the time and read it in books i read it in books all the time how basically like oh man this is gonna sound so mean take it like this a coward in order to they're so afraid of life so afraid of making the wrong decision so afraid of moving forward they literally would put all their decision making in someone else's palms or like you know if something bad happens they didn't make the decision even though, like, they have the effects of that. It's, like, it's like, something like that. All right, but anyways, let me move on. Oops. But anyways, that cycle, the point is that cycle has been closed. They cannot do that anymore. Now they have to, like, face the sphinx and answer the riddle themselves. They can't have other people answer that for them and la, 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 all that stuff, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's something about the moon here. My um sage just popped and it burnt the moon word right there. You see that? So you have a great sense of intuition and there's something that's going to be illuminated to you. Something that's going to be shown to you. It could be shown to you in your dreams at night or it's just something that... <clears throat> 
it's just something that it's like time for you to see something for what it is. So we have the moon and the stars. And then with Leo, it's giving like the sun. The, so you have the sun, moon, and stars. Literally the whole cosmos. They're showing you something. It could be about how amazing you are, what you really are, who you really are, your worth, and things like that. But there's also something about your intuition here. So I feel like that's why you're not paying attention to what's going on on the other side of the hedges because you already have an, like, an inkling, you have an idea of what's going on, so you don't really need to pay attention to it. It's like, it's kind of like, I already seen that episode, so I don't really need to see it again. It's like that. So, hold on, she wants her wings on. Here you go. You're welcome. <laughs> Okay, someone could also have been warned not to do something on top of not get close to you, not talk to you, not get near you, out of competition. So we're going to do this, um, person A, person B, all right, or persons A, persons B, people A, people B, you know, you will take it how that resonates. Let's say person A told person B not to go towards you, not to go near you, not to talk to you for whatever reason. That reason was out of competition, which it did not work because person B still wants to go near you. They still want to talk to you. They still want to get close to you. Person A did something that showed them for who they really are, which is why now person B is now sitting in isolation trying to figure things out. They're stumped. They're just like lost. And now it's up to them whether or not they want to continue to go towards you. And again, I'm going to tell you these cards in a minute. And again, you may know that this is happening, but you don't have to pay attention to it because you're just being told you're amazing. Um, don't get discouraged. You know, just keep having fun in life and blah, 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 blah. And whatever happens, happens. But at the same time, you're being told what's happening as it's happened because with the moon here, with your intuition, you're being told. So that's why it's kind of like we're going to let you know what's going on. So that way you don't have to go out of your way and see what's going on. We're going to just tell you. So that way you can stay in this fifth house Leo playful energy. So you know what's going on, but you also are just paying attention to yourself, right? So you know this is happening. Um, so person A committed fraud and they don't even feel bad about it. Committed fraud, no remorse. And person, person B knows that person A committed fraud and they don't even feel bad about it. They did it out of competition. And person B sees person A for who they really are, which is why person B is like, their world feels like it's being turned upside down and they're like, holy crap, what's going on? What do I, I like, I have to do this. Like, I, it's like, I don't know, there's something about their ego is shattering or like their realization, their sense of realization is shattering. All right. Because... They've seen this person for who they realize. It says, Proverbs 27, 19. As in water face reveals face, so a man's heart reveals the man. And this person, person A, who they really are, competitive, um, scammer, cheating, don't even feel bad about what's going on. They were, who they really are has been shown to person A. And when it says completion, zero, 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 completion, the end of the matter cycle close. This person A cannot be this way with person B anymore. So it's kind of like person A was doing things subconsciously manipulative, slight-handed to keep person B away from the collective. Okay? this They cannot do that anymore. Person B has seen person A for who they really are. They cannot hide this anymore. Let me get like two more. Let me move that like that so you can see better.
Protect your blessings. Yeah, okay, so that's why you're just being told to stay in that fifth house energy. And at the same time, that's why it's like the universe is like, we're going to let you know what's going on so that way you can stay in this fifth house energy so that way you can protect your blessings. So now that you know what's going on, just stay put in a way, right? Stay put. Pluto's warning. I feel like person A was definitely warned. Def person A was warned not to do something and they did it anyways. And now they were warned by Pluto. Like the cosmos warned this person. And now it's like, what did you expect? Pluto's warning. If your goals become selfish, I would aid those who will band together to pull you down. As far as your purely material goals are concerned, it will be as if you are powerless. Yeah, so whatever this person was trying to do, it's it ended. They can't do this anymore. Person A cannot do this. They were also warned not to do this. I feel like person A wanted to possess or take control or hold on to person B. <laughs> oh my goodness, is that your cat? Meow. Oh. Meow, meow, meow. It's a kitty. Aww. Gentle. Blue eyes. What color? Blue. Black, blue, white. She's got like one of those for real cats. But it's definitely been through some things because it's got like spots on it. Here you go, baby. So, um. Stop! <laughs> yeah, so this person was like, um, they wanted to like control or possess person B. like an object and person B realized that it was just like out of competition out of like it just wasn't there's something about it that was not pure it wasn't real anyways <sighs> So I feel like person A, they're losing a lot of things materialistically. It could even be financially, um, spiritually. They're losing a lot of things. And especially in particular, they're losing person B. Because who they really are is someone who like does bad things and they don't even feel bad about it. Um, they only care about materials. They would do anything to step on somebody to get what they want. If your goals become selfish, right, as far as pure, purely material goals are concerned. So, yeah, this person only cares about what they can hold on to, what they can um, take, harvest from other people, in particular person B. Or from you, if they try to take things from you, person B saw that, okay? There's a lot. I also feel like person A tried to take your blessings and person B saw something like that. It didn't work. At a competition. It just says secret competition did not work. I feel like I'm missing something. There's like a gap somewhere, like here. There's like a gap here. There's a gap somewhere, hold on. I'm missing something, what is it? 
it's so funny because in Harry Potter, there's this thing called a remember all, and it turns it's it's a like a it's it's a ball, but it's called remember all. Get it? It's a remember ball, remember all. But um, Neville got it as a gift, and um, all the kids were like eating. They were at the table opening presents and things like that. I think it was like for his birthday or Christmas, whatever. Anyways, it's called a remember all, and it turns red when you've forgotten something. And Neville goes, the problem is I can't remember what I've forgotten. That's so funny. I know it's, the only reason why I'm bringing that up is because I know there's a gap here somewhere, but I can't figure out what it is. There's a gap here. So it reminds me of the remember all. <laughs> I can't figure out what it is I've forgotten. The letter E. You could also be getting told you are the blessing, so you need to protect yourself. I know that sounds really selfish and not selfish, but like vain and cocky. But the entire, like I was talking about the entire reading, like you are at the center of this labyrinth, this maze. Like you are like the embodiment of pure magic. That's why the universe is like only those who are worthy can get close to the collective. With great power comes great responsibility. What am I missing? Please tell me so I can move on. Nine, nine, nine. Release. Let go of what is no longer serving you. Person A is not doing person B anything, like anything good. They're not doing them any good. That's another reason why person um, B is in this energy right now because it's like their whole world is going upside down. They're having all these realizations, all these eye openings, all these things. And it's just like, wow, uh, there's a bunch of things that I need to let go of. People I need to let go of. Habits I need to let go of. Ways I need to let go of. This person, there, it's like a massive ego death it's like everything is just like being ripped open and they're seeing things for the very first time it's like someone ripping open like a, a piece of netting and it's just like oh my gosh like it's like that or you know what it's giving me somebody oh my gosh somebody opening a womb and like emerging brand new it's like that it's like whoever this person is in a way they're being reborn Somebody was doing some heavy, heavy magic on this person. It was person A. Person B is literally in the process of being reborn. And it's like, I, I don't I, they they can't wrap their head around what they have to wrap their head around. And now they're trying to figure out how to do that. And I feel like you are in the center of this person, but they have to like do what they got to do. Is it in this side? Ooh. Something's ending for person A. Hold on one second. All right. Um, she was showing me something on the TV. We have Leo and Pisces out here. Pisces has been coming out a lot lately in like the past week and a half in my readings. So we have the fifth house and the twelfth house. So yeah, we have endings out here twice. Completion and then ending. So for whatever person A has been doing specifically out of material gain, <laughs> that's ended. Here, I'll kiss it, ready? Better. <laughs> She's in this phase where, like, all boobies are immediately healed after a kiss from mom. <laughs> so, I love it. Um, Self-undoing, endings, hidden self. Let's see. Subversion, confinement, secrets. Secret relationships, self-sacrifice, hidden enemies, endings. 
kidnappings, frustrations, escapism, exile, bribery, funerals, murder, suicide. So person A was working with heavy, dark manipulation. They were doing a lot of things. In the name of the greater good, the greater good being for them and their purely material goals, wants, needs, selfishness. I feel like person A was a hidden enemy, even to person B. Despite the fact that they wanted to like hold on to person B. They were still person's B enemy, and that's another thing that person B is realizing. Self-deception. This person, person A lies to themselves, too. They be lying to themselves. Why are you lying? They be, yeah, they be lying to themselves. Keeping themselves under some sort of, like, delusion. This person A is also very limited in their beliefs. And their spirituality. Hold on. Excuse me. Um, yeah, they're very limited in their beliefs and their spirituality. They keep themselves confined in a certain way of thinking or, or a certain belief or a certain way of living, being. They keep themselves in a box or contained or somehow some way um but by being this way this person just like they bring disaster upon themselves again they literally did this to themselves by being selfish and materialistic could be a leo could be a pisces you could be a leo you could be a pisces those are the only two signs we have out here so far This person could be under a lot of debt as well. Either if it's not financial debt, it's karmic debt. They just racked it up, racked it up, racked it up by doing all of this to person B. By trying to be in competition with you, the collective. So it's like, by being in competition with you, they just did so much. And spiritually, they just made things worse for themselves. And now everything that they gained or tried to get is being ripped away from them. Secret, secret relationships. This person could have also teamed up with people around you or people in the community or people around person B secretly without person B knowing. So this is the kind of person that they'll like gatekeep relationships. Like um, you see it in TV movies and books all the time. Like let's say person A has a friend. Call her Samantha, right? So Samantha is friends with person A. And person B knows that Samantha is person A's friend. And then person B is like, oh, well, we should all hang out. Person A would be like, oh, well, Samantha's always busy, blah, blah, blah. She's not always busy. It's just that person A doesn't want person B to meet and be friends with Samantha. It's like that. And people like that are weird. It's like, wh like, what? Or like, they'll be like, oh, well, why don't you, you know, if you want to talk to that, like, person A person a would be like oh um samantha does these cool things you know like if you want the service or whatever you know you know let me know and i'll let her know and then person b would be like well what's just her direct contact and then i can book the service myself person a would be like oh no no she's just always busy but it's just better if i do it myself like it's like person a is always like the middleman for some reason with these relationships it's weird this that's the kind of person that person a is I don't know, it's like out of fear or something. It's weird. Sorrow, exile, bribery. This person's very sad. They be crying a lot or they're just really depressed. They feel exiled now because they cannot do this anymore. Person B has detached themselves from person A. This is not even about the collective anymore. This is literally about person A. Tribulations, widowhood. So 
So this person failed at life or they failed this test. <sighs> they do not get to pass go and collect $100. All right, let me move on. This is, look, this is what I'm talking about. This person is trying to be like the middleman. This person, person A, you can see there's like a divide. Person A tried to like create a divide between the collective and person B. It's weird. This is the kind of person like, if there's like a new bakery in town, right? And they have like these amazing treats or whatever. And like, they'll bring the treats to their job. And then everybody's like, oh, well, you know, I'd like to book this, uh, this bakery for a caterer or whatever. Person A would be like, oh, well, you know, they're actually, they actually don't have a number right now. But like, you know, next time I go and I can talk to them, but then they never do that. It's weird. This, this person does things like that. I, I literally picked this up before. This is the kind of person like they'll be like, you'd be like, oh, I love your shirt. What did you get it? They're like, oh, I forgot. I got it from like a, a friend or it was like a gift knowing that they got it from like Macy's or some shit like that. Like right when you walk in at Macy's, you can see the shirt. It's on the rack. But they'll be like, oh, I got it as a gift. And, you know, I forgot when, blah, blah, blah. Like it's literally at Macy's. Just go to Macy's. It's, it's right there. This person gatekeeps, like, the weirdest things, too. This person could have also tried to keep person B um, out of spirituality or try to, like, confuse them or make it seem like spirituality is not real or having faith is silly or, like, magic is not real or witchcraft doesn't exist and things like that. But secretly, right, because it says – because the 12th house is also about secrets. But meanwhile, this person – believes in spirituality or does witchcraft or understands like something within like with intuition or whatever the case it is, but they just wanted to gatekeep that from um, person B. That's what I'm talking about. Person B is like, I keep seeing this person breaking and coming out of a womb. It's like this person is being reborn. This person cannot gatekeep anything, manipulate, lie, be possessive, be like, bribe or lie or whatever they were doing to person b they cannot do that and a lot of it had to do with like they were trying to keep person b away from the collective they can't do that anymore this is so like like just ew. there's this there's this funny video where it goes brother ew ew brother ew that's that's what i'm getting with this person like just their energy is just like, ew. Like, just major ick vibes. Like, ew. Just, you really operate like that? You really be doing things like that? You really be gatekeeping like that? Like, nothing is ever that serious to where you have to be like, oh, no, no, they don't have a phone number. Or, I forgot where I got it from. I got it from this. It, it's like, What? It's not that serious. It's material objects. It's not that serious. It's a bakery or it's a shirt. It's not that serious. I also feel like person A, I keep, sorry. I feel like person A wanted to keep person B limited by gatekeeping everything they possibly can, whether it's material like shirts, bakeries like treats spirituality knowledge even they just wanted to gatekeep everything they wanted to keep person b limited and like in beliefs and knowledge and assets and materials finances wisdom whatever everything it's not they cannot do that anymore for person b and this could either be on a grander scale the whole collective could be re-emerging and being reborn Like, everybody is waking up. Like, you can't lie to, like, the government can't lie anymore. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, why are you lying? We already know what we know. I already know what I know. 
your your gatekeeping is not also you know what's crazy too because we just before we are now in the age of aquarius before we were in the age of pisces right things that are being hidden secrets illusions lies briberies trickeries that's not happening anymore that's why i'm just like you cannot gatekeep anymore you cannot lie anymore you cannot keep things like the moon intuition is at a spike an all-time rise you cannot it's now the age of enlightenment the age of truth people are being logical about situations now people are using their minds or thinking right aquariuses are very very smart right and they think outside of the box that's a, that's why aquarius is signed as the water bearer right they're pouring ideas and life into things so whatever happened, it's like these lies, these limitations, they, they're not working anymore. It's, it's over. That time is gone. Now is the time for thinking outside of the box, thinking for yourself, doing things differently, right? Pouring into your passions, feeding and nourishing yourself, ideas, right? That's that's now. So... So on a grander scale, it could be like the government trying to keep the collective from being enlightened. On a smaller scale, this could be a person or a small group of people trying to keep person B away from the collective. Damn, an hour? I just saw 1141. If this cuts off, then I'm just going to post it as is. I'm not even going to like do a part two because it's already like 930 in the morning. And I'm, um... I want to go do something else. I gotta switch the deck. Yes, my love. There's a big thing about Alice in Wonderland as well. Not in this read. I mean, in this reading, but I mean, how do, how do I how do I say this? In in the air. Go watch Alice in Wonderland or read the book by Lewis Carroll. Yes, my love. Knight of Swords, whatever's happening is happening fast. It's, it cannot be stopped. It's already in motion. It's this. Like, this ending is happening fast. Like, you cannot... Person A cannot stop this from not happening. And I feel like they weren't even noticing that this was happening. So I keep saying this, but like hypothetically speaking, like if there was a large entity or whatever that was trying to keep hold and control the collective and bully the collective and trying to manipulate the collective with secrets and lies and briberies and keeping them limited and like stuck in a box and control spirituality and you know, keep who you really are hidden and not have you tap into your unconscious self and things like that. That's, that's no more. That can't, that's, that's done. That's done. It's like, God is like, yeah, we're not wake up. And everyone's like waking up, being reborn, coming out of like this veil of lies and shit like that. But I keep seeing it as like a white cloth like a white cloth it's like a, a person like a little white character coming out of a white cloth and it's like i know white represents purity cleanliness new beginnings 
um, innocence. So it's kind of like God is just like, all right, you're doing too much to my collective. They don't deserve this. And now God's like, all right, you wake up, you wake up, you wake up, you wake up, you wake up. And now everyone's going through like a rebirth and like, oh my God, I got to let this person go. I got to stop doing that. I got to move on from this. <laughs> That's on a much, much grander scale. On a smaller scale, person B is just like, oh my God, I got to do this. I got to let go of that. I got to move on from this, blah, blah, blah. All right? Knight of Cups. So the universe is offering you a bunch of things. <laughs> the universe is offering you everything that you ever wanted, everything that you ever dreamed of, within reason, of course, within for your highest good, of course, right? Um, also, somebody, a, a masculine, it could be a masculine that they want to offer you something. But, so let's say that's person B, or it could even be a feminine. You will take that how it resonates. They have to finish getting through this. This they have to get through this before they can like reach the center of the labyrinth. And the center of the labyrinth is you. So you could be working on multiple projects. You could be focused on multiple things right now. You could be doing multiple things right now. Juggling a lot of things in your life. But it seems like you're juggling things with grace. You could be... There's something about your emotions as well. You could have... You could be putting... Pouring into multiple things at once. Fifth house is all about romance, too. And then we have cups here. For some of you, there's something about two lovers. There's something about... Because these... um. Which of the two lovers bring you the most balance? Or if there's two people that want to offer you something, it's like which of these two people are going to bring you the most peace and balance? This person that's going through like a massive ego death or this person that's already like got, it seems like they've got their things together because they're upright on a horse. They're prepared to offer you a cup. They have their offer ready. They have like vegetables and, you know, they, they've got a broom. They've got a sword. They, they're on a horse and this horse has a bell. They're wading through the waters. You see, this knight, it seems like he's got a lot of things ready and prepared. Why is my camera doing that? You see my camera? That's weird. It's making me feel like this is like an old video or some shit like that. If my camera cuts out, then that's it. I'm going to post it as is. I'm not going to finish the reading or anything like that. I'm not. But, so it could be two masculines and you have to like pick out of the two or you're trying to figure out which of the two. There's two pentacles and then there's two cups in the water. So I feel like there is something about two lovers or two people, two... For some of you, it's two feminines. For some of you, it's two masculines. So one of them already has their things together and they're ready and prepared to make you an offer. Another person has a lot to deal with and go through before they can even, like they want to offer you something, but it's like they're not prepared to offer you anything. So I guess it just depends on you collective who you want to, 
receive and accept an offer from. It's so crazy because there's something about exempt. I feel like this person, they're exempt from having to go through certain obstacles to, to like offer you something. They don't have the same obstacles as person B does. This Knight of Cups, he doesn't. It's weird because there's something about, so this Knight of Cups could have, could have already gone through certain things in his life, which is why he is exempt from the same tribulations that person B is going through. Because I feel like this Knight of Cups understands and knows how to protect their blessings versus person B Yes, they're now waking up and going on a spiritual journey, blah, blah, blah. But one of their lessons was learning how to not put their blessings in the hands of other people, as in person A, or the world. Yeah, my camera is like glitching out. What is that? I just saw 1-11-11. I'm telling you, if it cuts out, I'm just going to post it as is. I'm not even going to finish the reading because my camera is like being weird i've never seen it do this maybe because it's been recording for too long maybe that's why Stop! all right this is a reading bye